Hello and welcome everyone. You're watching Bicycle Touring Talk, episode 49. I'm George Schlacke. The one and only. If you've seen my previous episode, you already know that Nicaragua is a very exciting country, full of contradictions and surprises. We left off in Granada, the oldest city on the American continent that was founded by Europeans. Granada definitely has a unique vibe and I simply couldn't get enough of it in two days. The only reason I moved on so quickly was because of the ever-looming deadline of a return flight to Edmonton from Panama, sometime in early April. It was impossible for me to estimate the exact time the ride would take, so my strategy was to stay ahead a tad, distance-wise in comparison to my timeline, so I wouldn't have to rush through the last portion of my tour. I left Granada on the morning of February 19th. The ride started off like a charm, with a tailwind strong enough to forget about any hills at all. I was flying and loving it. Overall, cycling through Nicaragua was a lot of fun. But I'd be stretching the truth if I told you it was easy. The problem of the day started in Nandaime, when the route took a turn south. Now the same strong wind was trying to push me right off the road, which it actually did a couple of times. Adding to the struggles were some big trucks passing me so close it made me quite nervous. The road had a shoulder, but it was very narrow. I couldn't help but wonder if any of the drivers that passed had stopped at one of the many roadside bars for lunch and also enjoyed a few beers or even mojitos. My plan had been to reach San Jorge by late in the afternoon and stay there for the night. When I eventually got there, it turned out that the best places to stay were not here, but on the island of Ometepe. I had seen the two majestic volcanoes in front of me for some time and it had seemed like I was headed right for them. But it turned out they were on the island about 15 kilometers offshore. Boats were available and it was an easy decision to wait for the next one. In the meantime, I was going for a late lunch at a great little hamburger stand. They either really knew how to prepare a burger or I was just super hungry from cycling. I just remember gobbling up the meal like a hungry wolf. Unfortunately, that was a big mistake, as you'll see in a bit. See, the first boat available happened to be one of the smallest of the entire fleet. I had no clue how rough the passage would be. But the wind I was telling you about earlier never really led up. The boat had a cargo deck up on top and the passengers were seated on benches down below. This was an ancient wooden boat. Just boarding it felt like an adventure. My bike with all its luggage had to stay on the cargo deck, but I was able to take off the handlebar bag with my valuables in it and throw it over my shoulder. It took some time for the boat crew to load all the cargo they had to accommodate. There were packages of various goods, building materials, a motorcycle, and even a couple of those big water tanks that people typically have on their roofs here. By the time we left the shore, my biggest worry was what time we'd get to the island and whether it would be possible to find a place to stay so late in the day, possibly after dark. The real challenge was of a totally different nature, but in my entire life I had never experienced something like that. See, I'm known to have what they call an iron stomach. It means I seldom get sick from food, even if it's not perfect. This time was different, but I'm sure it had nothing to do with the quality of the hamburger I had eaten just before boarding. 
The sea was extremely rough, and so was the passage in the heavily loaded boat that also seemed to be top-heavy. The burger? Hmm, yeah, it ended up in Lake Nicaragua, and unfortunately on the deck as well. It actually barely missed a fellow passenger because the wind even carried that all over. <laughs> <laughs> to say I was embarrassed would be putting it mildly, but the vomiting actually made me feel better. I had been trying to control it, sweating buckets, but then a big wave lifted the entire boat in a swooping motion and my stomach emptied itself. As bad as it made me feel, the crew seemed to be used to it already and someone mopped up the mess right away. I had been taking pictures of the island from the water and was feeling bad for having stood at the front of the boat looking at the rough sea. So I spent the rest of the passage on the passenger bench. I couldn't get on firm ground soon enough now. Once off the boat, I was fine. Fortunately, it wasn't completely dark and it didn't take long to find a great bargain on a hotel room. What a day it had been. I got cleaned up and headed out for a walk around the village just to recuperate from the rough passage. When I returned to the hotel, I noticed a young couple in front of the door next to mine smoking cigarettes. A closer look revealed that I had met them in Granada. Petra and Thomas were from Germany. They were on a tour of Central America as well, but they were traveling mainly by bus. It was interesting to listen to their stories of riding the old buses that had almost certainly started their lives as school buses in North America, sharing space with local people, chickens and even a goat. I still think that cycling is the best way to travel, but the bus sounded like a big adventure for sure. I was not going to leave the island right away after such a passage on a boat. It would have been a shame as there was so much to explore. As a cyclist, I was able to circle the entire island the next day. This was also the first time since leaving Cancun that I had the opportunity to ride my bike without luggage. I was able to ride all around the Volcán de Concepción, a roughly 40 kilometer ride on a road that was supposedly all paved but turned out to be a dirt road in some places. I passed through the village of Mayo Galpa and finally stopped in Alta Gracia for ice cream. It was a beautiful sunny day and the strong wind from the previous day was no longer there. Ometepe Island is another unique feature of Nicaragua that I didn't even know about before stumbling upon it. This island alone is worth an extended visit and it was also quite popular with tourists. You can hike up the volcano here as part of one of many guided tours that are offered. As a cyclist, Going around the volcano on my bike really gave me a unique experience that very few tourists go after. On the way back to San Jose del Sur, I saw many beautiful places that were untouched by tourism and even saw a herd of cows enjoy their free time on the beach. If you're going to Nicaragua, plan a day or two or more on Ometepe Island. You will definitely not regret it. Except maybe wait for the bigger ferry instead of taking the earliest available boat. Your stomach might appreciate it. The volcano called Concepcion is still active. Along my way I met some hikers who were about to climb up there. One lady who seemed very athletic told me it was quite dangerous and should not be undertaken without a guide. 
After my longer than expected bike ride, I got to enjoy and photograph a beautiful sunset before discovering Ichido's pizza for supper. Pizza was great and the place had internet. So I went to get my laptop and returned for a beer. That pretty much sums up my day. I left Ometepe Island on February 21st with the goal of returning to the Pacific Ocean for some real beach time. I was a little bit nervous about the ferry ride back to the mainland but this time the ride turned out to be very smooth. It might have had something to do with the bigger ferry, but the wind was blowing from behind this time and was not nearly as strong as the first time around. The ride to San Juan del Sur was relatively short and uneventful. Now I was back at the ocean. Once again, the experience was very different from the beaches in El Salvador. For one thing, the water was much colder here, and it was also very windy, something this area seems to be known for. San Juan del Sur is a bit of a tourist trap, but there are no high-end luxury hotels that I know of. It's more of a backpacker's place. I met lots of young tourists from all over. A young lady from Germany told me about Rosita's Jaxi Hotel a place with a nice patio up on the first floor for guests to hang out. The price was cheap and the room was simple, which was exactly the way I liked it. It was an easy decision to take the room for two nights. After settling in, I noticed that the lady I had met was in the room next to mine with a friend. It was early afternoon and my plan was to explore the town and go for a swim. I never got to do it all as the town was so interesting that I walked around until I was hungry for supper. By the time I made it to the beach, the sun had already set, but now I was enjoying a great supper with live music and a view of the ocean. Life doesn't get much better than this, or does it? Well, I went for an ice cream after supper and yet another walk around town. This place was exciting and once again I could barely get enough. What to do? When I returned to the hotel to use the Wi-Fi, I found the young German lady sitting on the patio by herself. She introduced herself as Claudia. Her friend Karin had left her by herself because of some local guy she had met. Like Petra and Thomas from the other night, Claudia and her friend were traveling Central America by bus. They had an entire month for the adventure. Claudia and I shared a couple of beers on the patio where it was extremely comfortable at night. Our rooms had air conditioning, but the units were old and noisy and could barely keep up with the humidity. I slept really well that night and woke up late the next morning. My first trip was for breakfast and then straight to the beach. It was February 22nd. This was going to be my last full day in Nicaragua. It was beautiful sunshine with a stiff breeze blowing, surprisingly from the opposite side of the ocean. At times it almost felt like a sandstorm. I went for a swim and was surprised about how cold the water was compared to other beaches I had been at. It felt nice to cool off, but I had to be very careful not to get a sunburn. A local man started a conversation after I got out of the water. Hello. I found out that the water gets even colder here in March and April due to the ocean currents. I mostly spent a lazy day, except that there was a surprise waiting for me in my room. It was a flat tire, number four of my trip. 
to be honest, I wasn't really that surprised because the tire had seemed a bit soft the previous day. I had pumped it up in the morning and it had seemed to hold the pressure. But after lunch, it was obvious that there was a slow leak. So I decided to fix it. Thanks to the toilet tank, it was easy to find the leak. I ended the day with a walk on the beach during sunset, followed by supper in town. For the following day, I was planning to leave Nicaragua and enter Costa Rica. I knew that the day was going to start with a ride against the wind for 20 kilometers or so. The border wasn't exactly far, but I set my goal to reaching a place called La Cruz that was within close proximity. It meant that I was going to enter country number seven on my journey. That morning was indeed a battle against the wind. As could be predicted, the worst was getting back to the Pan American Highway. At one point, while climbing a hill, a runner passed me on foot and laughed at me. Didn't he know that cycling up those hills meant a lot more work than running? Not only was I hauling my own weight, but also about 80 pounds of bike and luggage. Once I was back near the shore of Lake Nicaragua, I blew my last Cordobas on some cookies and a bottle of Pepsi. That, as it turned out, was a mistake. My last impression of Nicaragua were some wind turbines that were going to be erected. The blades were mind-blowingly huge. Here I was, ready to cross another border. What was going to expect me in Costa Rica? I already knew that Costa Rica is the most popular country in Central America when it comes to tourism. Was this a good thing? Find out when I come back next weekend with the 50th episode of Bicycle Touring Talk. Yes, that'll be a bit of a milestone. I hope you enjoy this series, and if you haven't yet, support my channel by subscribing. Mm, yeah, I say that a lot because it means a lot. So thanks for that. You might want to check out some of my older videos too. So. Here are a few suggestions, and I'll see you soon.